Bowers game. Well, hi there, YouTube. I'm back again today for another game review. And today, I'm very excited to check out Foragers from Dr. Finn's Games. This is for two to four players, ages 14 plus, and it'll take you about an hour to play. And in Foragers, you are going to be playing as ancient people in this pick up, deliver, action salad set collection game. Which can be doing a little bit of everything, collecting apples and bison and potentially fighting people and running around, conserving your energy, eating food and trying to win the game. What am I talking about? There's a lot going on here. The middle part is a little bit longer than normal, but let's check it out. Alrighty then, we're going to take a look at what you're going to get inside of Foragers. So first and foremost, we're going to get a handy dandy rule booklet. It's, uh, let's see, about 11, 12 pages, double-sided, full color, full of pictures, illustrations, examples. It is a very well-done rule booklet, have you up and running in no time at all. It's a pretty simple game, so I can give you the gist of it right now. So in Foragers, what you're going to be doing is you are going to be foragers. Ah, can't you see? You're foragers. <clears throat> and you're going to be wandering around in a prehistoric time collecting fish and meat and tools and apples and then trying to take them to various different tribes denoted by these different colored fire pits around the board and those will gain you victory points but this is also kind of a point salad game so there's numerous different ways to gain victory points in this game we'll go over the components then we'll get into the gameplay so uh, first component wise we went over the rule booklet they also have a nice little setup card which will show you how to set up the game and uh, it's very useful i love when game companies include this so extremely useful there Next, you're going to have your actual tiles out here, and this is going to be your setup for a three and a four player game. So it starts off looking like this. A two player game is going to be a three by three grid, but it starts off like this because you're actually going to be adding additional tiles and exploring. That's another way you can gain victory points. And when you explore, you might find territories that are going to have something like this. So this one has can hold three apples one fish, and then five bison. And also there's going to be one tool to retrieve over here. And they all look uh, pretty much the same, slightly different from here to there. There's two kinds of pieces. There's ed pe edge pieces, and then there is going to be outside pieces. So it's all easy to keep them together. So those are gonna be the different parts of the tile. So let's go ahead and take a look at two of these tiles and I'll show you the other locations that I haven't really talked about. So first are going to be these spots. These are called rest areas. These are where you're going to spawn. And also, if you choose to rest there at the end of your turn, uh, if you just stop there at the end of your turn, you're going to gain four strength, which is a great thing. Another big thing about this is there is some player interaction, and if you're on a rest spot, no one can interact with you. No one can bully you because there is some of that going on in this game. Next, you're going to have a fire pit. This is where you're going to be selling your goods, and the goods that you will be able to sell will be right here. So let's set that up so you can see kind of how that works. So when you start the game, you're going to randomly be drawing some of these tiles right here. And uh, these will show you exactly what that tribe is going to want. So they might want apples, they might want fish, they might want bison, and you're going to randomly be scattering these on these different spots around the board. Uh, only one person is going to be able to complete these objectives. So let's just say we have these four over here. So that is exactly what that tribe is going to want. Likewise, over here, uh, we randomly selected these guys just went crazy about, say, apples and then bison. And this is a wild. Uh, this one, they're going to want one of everything, one apple, one fish, and one bison. But you're going to have these spread all around the board. So that's going to be the board. Your food is going to be denoted by these cubes right here. When one of the part of the setup phase, you're going to set up exactly how many animals or fish or apples there are. You're going to set up that many cubes right there. So at the beginning of the game, you might set three red cubes on all the three red apples and three blue cubes on all the three blue ones. And that's part of the thing you do before you start the game. Now, these are finite amount. So when someone takes all three fish here, there will be no more fish there for the rest of the game. Uh, but those are the different kinds of cubes that you're going to have on the board. Uh, next, I mentioned that there were some tools, and you're going to have face-down tools like this that will match the different tool icons right there. If you go to that spot, you will be able to pick up this tool, which will be set out at the beginning of the game, and it will give you a special effect. And we'll talk about those special effects in a minute. This one has a little apple on it, so as you can probably guess, it deals with picking apples. So... Component-wise, what other components do we have? Big one is going to be your board right here. And this is your little tableau. This is where you're going to be tr keeping track of everything. This is your central hub. 
So up top, you're going to have strength. This is what you're going to use to bully people, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Also, this is going to allow you to run, and it will give you victory points at the end of the game, because however strength, how much strength you have is going to give you victory points at the end of the game. Next, we have your different three different food compartments. This is where you're going to be storing your food. Food. So if you have two bison that you've uh, that you've captured, then you will have two bison right here. Now, in addition to bringing your bison to the different tribes so you can gain victory points, you'll also be able to eat your food, which will give you strength. So if you eat fresh food, it's going to give you three strength. So you'll be able to move up your little uh, chip right here, go one, two, three. Uh, however, if it's a little bit old, you're only going to gain two food. And if it's here, you're only going to get one food. So ideally, if you're giving food to the different tribes, you kind of want to give them the older food and keep the fresher food for yourself because it's going to give you more strength. So down here we got our victory point salad. Uh, and there's a lot of different ways to score victory points right here. So we'll go over a couple of them. First, if you go to two of the different tribes and give them what they want, at least one thing what they want, you're going to get two victory points. If you can go to all three, or go to three, you'll get four. And if you go to all four of them, you'll get seven victory points, which is a lot of victory points. So you might want to spread yourself out and try and hit up every tribe. But at the same time, this one over here means if you have three of the same symbol, so if you get uh, three apple victory point markers or three bison, so on and so forth, you'll get two victory points. If you can get four, you'll get five victory points. Next, this is where you're going to be keeping all of your tools that you're going to be collecting. If you are able to collect one tool, you'll get one point, two tools, three points. So as you can see, if you can collect more of these tools, you're going to be able to get more victory points. So there's a lot of different ways to score points in this. Also, this is going to be worth victory points. This will be worth six victory points because it has a six on it. So continuing on with the components, there's a lot of stuff going on initially. You're going to have these cards right here. These cards right here are going to be your spoilage cards. Because as I mentioned, you're going to have food in here that you're going to put all your food that you collect here. Uh, and it's going to start spoiling. It's going to start aging, which means it's going to be worse for you to eat because it will give you less strength. This, you'll be flipping over a card at the end of the round, and it will show you what's going to be spoiling and how much. So you're never exactly sure what's going to spoil and when it's going to spoil. Last but not least on the component-wise, I swear, are going to be your action selection cards right here. And this is a really interesting mechanism. I will show you how this works in a minute. But they all look pretty much the same to you right now, but with various different numbers. But these are going to be the actions that you are limited to on your turn. And there also is going to be a public one that people can use. It's not the best to use, but if you're in a pinch, it's always a good thing to do. But when someone else plays here, they block it, so they you cannot use it. So all that was probably clear as mud, so I'll walk you through a mock turn so you can see exactly what's going on. So the first phase is going to be the planning phase, and what you're going to do is you're going to take the top three of your cards right here, and you're going to look and you're going to decide what you want to do. So our pawn's right there, obviously only got it set up for a one-player game right now. So let's take a look at the different symbols on the cards. So the first one is walking. If you walk, you just, do, you just get a move. You move that many spaces. So do I want to walk five spaces or do I want to walk three spaces? That's pretty much what it boils down to here. And let's see, maybe I really want to get to these apple right, apples right here. So I don't need five spaces. All I need is one, two spaces. So you know what? I think we're going to decide between one of these two. So next we have the collect, the gather action. So this one's going to collect, let me collect six grand total on my turn. Four at one place, two at another place. This one's going to let me do three and three. So it's kind of a wash there. The next symbol right now is uh, the pickup tool one. That's what I want to show you. This one right here. Because as I mentioned, there will be tools scattered around the board. So actually, it just so happens that there is, in fact, a tool right there where that apple is. Because as we can see, that symbol is right there. So that makes it a great spot to go to. So you know what? Ooh, that, there's no tools on these ones. But maybe I can luck out and I can use the community tool function right there. We'll have to check that out and see. The next one you're going to see is eat. And eat is not on here on any of those three, so we'd have to do it on the community card. But eat is very simple. If you play it here, you'll be able to eat two pieces of food, because it is a two. Uh, and then you remove that food from your little tableau down here, and you will gain X amount of strength, which means you will take your strength marker, which should be a black cube, but I don't know where that is right now, and you would move it up however many points you move it up, which makes you a little bit stronger. And you're still like, why do I need to be strong? I don't understand that. I'll tell you about it in a second. 
Next, you have rest, and the rest function is right here. This is just going to let you collect your strength, so if you placed your action cube right there, you would gain four strength. Likewise, this one would gain you three strength. Next, you have share, and share is on every single card. That means if you were at a fire pit, with these guys right here, and you have the goods that that tribe wants, you can put an action on the share one, and then you can give them your goods, you can get this and, uh, you know, get victory points for the end of the game. Now, there is one more, uh, one more action that I have not talked about that is not on any of these cards, but only on the public action card, and that is Discover right there, because there's another victory way to get victory points in this game. So, if you are on a tile and on a path that is connected to nowhere, like this one right here, so I'm connected but there's nothing here, you can go on the discover spot, which means you will get to randomly draw out a new tile based on how it fits on the board. So this one would fit right there. You put it out there, you're gonna gain one victory point and then you fill it up with apples and fish and bison and a tool, and then you continue on your merry way. So just for discovering, you're gonna get a victory point. Also, since you're really close to it, you're gonna have the potential to get whatever goodies are here before other people do, which is always a good thing. Now. So those are the actions you're going to use your action cubes on, and I'll show you about how that works in a second. But there is one more action called running. And running is when you want to start spending all of your hard-earned energy. So running, as you can probably guess, is going to allow you to move, but it doesn't cost you an action cube. You just have to spend two strength whenever you want to run. So let's say I'm right here, and I really, really want to get over here really fast. So um, let's take a look. Let's actually run through this on a mock turn. Where's my action cards? My action cards right here. I chose this one for some particular reason. So I am going to place my first action cube on the three move. So I get to move one, two, three spaces. Now, what I can also do is I can use my strength, or some of my strength to run. So let's say I'm here on the strength. I'm going to need to spend two strength for every one space I run. So two, four, 6, 8, 10, 12. Do I even have that much strength? Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I just barely have that much strength, but I would get to where I want to go, which might help me do something awesome. So you're able to run, and you can do that before or after you spend an action cube. So let's say I'm here right now. It comes back to my turn. My next action I might want to take is to sell, to, to sell something to the tribe. So I would take, uh, let's just say they wanted uh, three, three bison. I would take my three bison off of the board, and then I would take the three bison chip, which let's pretend it's the three bison chip, and I'd put it on my board, and I've got victory points at the end of the game. Goes around the table. Next, what do I want to do? I don't have enough energy to move because I spent it all. Uh, so I might look right here, and I might see the community card that no one has taken rest yet. And I might say, all right, maybe I'll rest. Or if I had food, I might eat. Let's pretend that I rest, though. So I would put that there, and I would gain two strength. Last, everyone would go again. I would have my final cube, and oh, oh, I did make a mistake right here. Um, you have to use if it. You have to use it on your action card if it's on your action card before you use up here. So I would actually do the four down here first. So I'd gain two more. And then that'd be great because if I had it still, I could do rest again and gain two. But that's how the action selection is going to work. Pretty much you're going to go around placing your cubes on your card or on the main card right here. And you're going to do that until everyone has used their card. So strength. How does strength come into play? So let's pretend that I am very strong and I'm right here. Let's pretend I am a four strength. If you are a three strength, you cannot go through this spot. I am blocking it. You cannot go through it, period. But if you are a five, let's pretend that somebody else is a five and they want to go through here, they can go through this spot. They can't land on the spot, but, or they can't stop on the spot, but they can go through the spot. And if they do that, they would steal one victory point from me. And you will have victory points in front of you when you start the game. You'll earn them along the way as well. Uh, so you're going to have victory points that other people can steal from you if they are stronger than you. Now, it's not the most viable way to get points most of the time, but it is a way to rack up some points and to directly steal points from other people. And it's one of the few ways that there is player involvement in this game, like direct player conflict. Because if someone's running around with six strength, you really kind of want to stay the heck away from them, especially if you have low strength. Luckily, though, as I mentioned, if you're on a rest area or if you're on... 
the stones right here, no one can mess with you. So that's always a good thing. So next phase, we've done the action phase. We do the spoilage phase, which is where you're just going to flip over this card and you will spoil uh, all of these two. So just move them up two spaces, or you'll move them over, I should say, two spaces on your tab below. And then you get to the assessing phase. You see if the game has ended, which is when all the spoilage cards have been used. And the game is not over. You uh, wrench, wash, and repeat. You pass, pass the first player card, and then you continue to do that until all the spoilage cards are played. At the end of the game, you're going to tally up your victory points based on all the different victory point conditions we talked about earlier. Whoever has the most points will be the winner of Foragers. And that, in a nutshell, is how the game is played. Alrighty then, Foragers from Dr. Finn's Games. What are my final thoughts? Let's go over the pros, let's go over the cons. First, on the con side, um, the game has a little bit of a steep learning curve when you're first teaching it, as you saw in the middle part. It's not a complex game at all, but there's a lot of different ways to score victory points. There's quite a few actions going on here. There's, uh, there's some different symbology, and when you're first starting the game, it can seem daunting. It's not, though, because that, honestly... It's a very simple game at its core, hence the 60 minute play time, which for a pickup and delivery game is, you know, a little bit shorter than a lot of them. Also on the con side, two to four players is an incredibly restricted player count. And if you're in the two to four player market, you really have to be packing a punch if you're gonna have any impact at all. So that is something I want to mention. If you don't routinely hit the table with two to four players, might not be for you. Um, Another con is that I wish there was a little bit more player interaction. I wish, I feel like there's a lot of different strategies. There's different paths to victories. Maybe you go around collecting tools. Maybe you try and run to all the different spots so that you can get that seven point bonus. But I wish that the actual being strong and blocking people and running through people to take their victory points was just a little bit more viable. Because what happens is, if you run through somebody and you run through them and you're strong, you might take all their victory points and they might not have any more victory points. And at that point, your ability ceases to be useful, especially in a two-player game. Uh, your strength, I should say. And then you can have to completely change your focus. Um, so yeah, I wish there was just maybe a little bit more of a bump. I wish they would just uh, not nerf it, but the opposite of nerf it a little bit to the strength there. Um... Any other cons I have the game? No, it's hard to poke holes in this game because it's a very solid game. This is a good game. Do I think it's a great game? No, I don't think it's a great game. I think it's really the, the restricted player count that's holding it back. But everyone that I played it with really enjoyed this game. My problem is I don't routinely get two to four player games to the table. When I get review copies of games, two to four is without a doubt the hardest to get to the table because I can play it at two players. My wife will play something with me at two players. But with three and four, I need to play it at those player counts too because obviously the game's going to be different at two as opposed to four. Now, I am happy to say this plays well at all the different player counts. I did enjoy it. They got a little of a, bit of a dummy thing going on in the two-player game, which works pretty well. Uh, but, but what I like about this game, I like the different actions. I like the running. When you finally get just how important running is, you're like, whoa, the map just opened up to me. I don't need to worry about being strong necessarily because if I can get to point A to point B to point C fast that's what's going to happen i also like at the end of the game as you're getting towards the tail end of the game this game has quite a good deal of tension because as i mentioned there's a finite amount of food on the board and resources and tools on the board so it just becomes this race to get to various different points and you're trying to figure out who's winning but it's kind of hard to do because there is so much stuff on your tableau he's got he doesn't have many tools but he has visited all four and then he has let's see he's got a three and a six and you're trying to add up numbers in your head to see who's in first place and it's not always that easy especially in a four player game i like that all the games we played were close they were tense and they came down to the last bit be like i think he's winning i think we need to get somebody strong in front of him to block him into there so he doesn't have the actions so you're like looking at other people's boards and you're like all right he has he has uh, let's see he's up nine on the strength track so he's gonna be able to run four spaces so we need to use the rest so he can't get to the fifth spot he can't do this there's a quite a good deal of thought going into this game and decisions you make can be pretty important especially as you get towards the end of the game which i liked all of that so overall foragers is a good game i enjoyed it everyone i played it with enjoyed it i liked it in all the different player counts but for me personally little bit of a too restrictive player count but still if you hit two to four players routinely 
this is a great game to add to your shelf. So that is Foragers from Dr. Finn Games, one that I can give a recommendation to, even though I don't know if it's going to stick around on my shelf. If you enjoyed this review, please be sure to click on the subscribe button down below and in the comments below. Let me know if you were the dude that invented fire, what would be the first, the very first thing you did with it after you got past the whole, oh my gosh, I'm freaking out, there's fire right here. For me personally, I'd probably use it just to mess with people. I think that would be my biggest thing. I would, uh, I would just, I don't even know, I'd like try and pretend to make people believe I was some kind of magical god or something like that. I guess that's not really tricking people. That is tricking people, but that's in a really kind of an evil way. I don't know. I guess I'm an evil person. Let me know in the comments below. What would you do if you invented fire? Let me know in the comments. And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube.